Hey guys, King Gath here, and welcome to day six of my Let's Play series. This is an edited video. It came from a live stream, so if you're looking for the full stream, or if you like what you watch in this slim down and you want to see the full thing with all of my commentary, my guest uh, at the uh, halfway point, then uh, go check that out. The full stream is available as well on the channel. But before we get into the video, I just wanted to give a shout out and thanks to some patrons who kind of make the mod what it is today, thanks to their support. So shout out and thank you to D Dimmick. Nick Clark, Nissy7070, Connor Sanders, Adam Rogers, Scott, Raniesha, Neil, Iron Legend 747, and Set. And if I didn't get to you today, don't worry, I will get to you in a future video. I've got a lot to catch up on, but you guys are amazing. You are making it possible for us to keep this thing going for the long haul and make us uh, allow us to keep adding things that we never thought possible. So thank you guys. And uh, with all that said, enjoy the rest of the video. There we go, bright and sunny, nice to look at. You guys can see it all. And, okay, well, we can fast travel to Walden Pond. There we go. One of the things that I've always hated about this quest we're about to go do here is there's there's always some spawns of insects when you get over here, and all of them are fighting them whenever you arrive. And I've never been able to find a good solution for that, because anytime there's uh, some technical techno babble here, uh, they're in the creation kit, there's these things called leveled spawns, which are... These little spawn markers where the NPC that spawns is pulled from a pool that's appropriate level for the player. And uh, the problem with them is you can't always interact with them in real time. And I don't like editing stuff in vanilla. So, oh man, I got to remember to unequip my camera. I'm never going to forget the uh, the moment with the uh, the moment with the camera when we met Aiden. That was phenomenal. I, I don't hear them fighting. They must have cleared them out quick. Earlier when I rec when I was recording, I was actually recording this quest for uh, one of the voice actors, uh, and they were all going crazy. And then old Paul got stuck under the ground. It was like, uh oh, this is not going to go well. Wait a second, are you threatening me? Ah, oh, great, another Hubert. Ah, yes, I am threatening you. Do as I say, or I will be forced to hurt you. <laughs> Stodge is so funny. He's got like he's all Whatever. geared out to the nines in raider armor, and he's got that garbage pipe pistol. You, but I don't trust. <laughs> See, yeah, I'm a I'm a uh, high charisma character, but yeah, I think I think everybody I think high charisma is the way most people go, and most people negotiate and talk Stodge down. So I think we need to. Uh... You don't want to lay into me. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Look, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm lowering my gun. All right. That's good, Stodge. See, no need to point guns at everyone. No one's here to hurt us, so why not listen about the Assams now, eh? If we join this nice fella, he'd help us build this place into a real home. Youngest, right. Seen these sensors in action myself. Just the thing for a fledgling settlement. Okay, fine. If it shuts the two of you up, I'll listen. I actually am not sure what... It might be that at this point he's set essential, and if I just start shooting him, it's just going to break the quest. But let's see here. You can recruit Stodge in his group, which is the one I think that's what most people end up with. You can get him to leave, or you can murder him in his group. So the murder route, uh, basically, the, Teresa, Hubert, and Gibbs all turn on, on Stodge and whatnot. I don't know how much backstory you can get by talking to all to them all, but they're basically their backstory for all these characters is they're a kind of a disparate band of people who all had we're all kind of running from something, and they were they had formed a settlement together, and it's kind of implied that the gunners were the ones who pushed them out of their home, but we didn't we didn't say that explicitly, and I think that was part of it was because this was a quest that was inherited from before we got the gunners involved, and I think. Sirik just liked it being vague, uh, but the characters weren't in full alliance with one another. There was kind of two little factions with one group following Stodge and the other following Teresa, but Teresa kind of letting Stodge take charge most of the time. Well, So this quest was designed to introduce the, the idea of city plans and leaders, like even though they're both available to you guys before Although, that. For people who weren't idea, familiar with stuff, SS1 so or, um, you, uh, you, you know, didn't didn't take a lot of time to dig into the mod and try and find things. Like, if you don't take a bunch of time to experiment with the city planner's desk. In fact, I don't think before this we even suggest building a city planner's desk. It's just kind of available to you. Uh, this was a quest to introduce it right in front of the player's face after we were sure they were comfortable enough with plots to have city plans because the way the city plans work best with your default options if you understand what's going on with the plot so that you can swap them out and change the city plan to match what you're hoping for i'll help you i'm gonna zap you ow there he goes yeah you can do it so we've got uh 
uh, I think so we the way we determined the skills was kind of like the effort involved in acquiring the character combined with their importance in the story and their background kind of all bled together to create different uh, stat pools so it was like depending on uh, if they were more important to the story, they got a little bit higher stat pool. If they were super easy to get, they got a little lesser. So Old Paul probably has a smaller pool than, say, uh, Hubert, though I could be wrong on that. Um, not necessarily because Old Paul needs to have lower stats, but because we wanted the, the stats where people are really paying attention to them or people are min-maxing, and so for them we want to make sure that it plays out well gameplay-wise. Come on, Behemoth. There we go. What are Behemoth's stats? Oh, wow. He's weak. Mama Murphy's tougher than you, buddy. But he lives at Hester's Consumer Robotics, apparently. <laughs> Alright, let's get us out. Proper gun here. We're going to use a garbage gun because I am not going to do much fighting here. Oh! Head smashed immediately. Punished. No idea when I last saved. <laughs> and old Paul taking up the rear. Hey everyone, I'm Hubert and uh, I'll be leading us now. Yes, so, um, I guess this. we should build ourselves some homes, eh? All right then, let's get to it. All right, yeah, we'll go ahead and tear it all down. Go into city plan mode. Oh, I love cinematic mode. It still makes me so happy that I got this working. This this was uh, like a labor of love for just a week of obsession. I just kept hammering at the engine until I figured out how to make this thing work. All right, what do you got to say, Hubert? Okay. Oh, wow. This all looks real promising, eh? I knew the Assums were the answer we needed. Thank you so much. I promise I'll do my best to lead this place in your name. Maybe now we can have a bit of peace and quiet for a while. There we go. Oh, and of course, did hey, I catch them? Uh, first off, oh, hey, one of those random combos. Well, thank you. I know it's not half as good as what you have in your shop, but I do my best to, how do they say, make it work. And make it work, you do. Uh, look, uh, me and Carnal, that isn't going to be an issue with your religion, is it? Of course not. The two of you are well-meaning members of the flock. Mutant or not. Uh, that's, um, <clears throat> that's not exactly what I meant. Oh. Oh! <laughs> I'll have to look into a bit. I'll admit, that isn't really something they cover in the old books. No problem, no problem. So yeah, there's lots of random little conversations. We tried to add a lot of flavor in Concord. We wanted it to feel like a little uh, living town, which is why you start getting the defenses and everything appearing. Alright. Where do I find one of those? Oh, there she is. Hi. Hey there. Oh, excuse me. Oh, hi. You must be the one who's been fixing all the problems in the Commonwealth. I just wanted to introduce myself, Alyssa Stevens, at your service. The Commonwealth's up-and-coming star reporter. Help us so this character, build a I believe, press. is... Um, actually, I know for a fact, is one of the names that... I Actually, maybe I'm wrong on this. So we had a series of characters that were kind of made-up characters on our newspaper. So if you've ever played with the Industrial Revolution newspaper, which did get ported forward it's uh, into SS2, it was from Industrial Revolution. And the writing team that we assembled for that they created in-game personalities to sign all the newspapers with so it was kind of like these characters were living somewhere in the commonwealth but you never actually meet them and when we started the project to get all the well we had the two projects going simultaneously i'm trying to think of the timeline of this it was so many years ago but at some point the the leader of the writing team at the time thought it would be a cool idea to start putting the different newspaper characters as recruitable settlers where they'd show up to your settlements eventually. And um, I think this character came from that project, but it got totally warped from its original purpose. We have another one that almost made it through that I think is actually up for casting right now called Alex Chang. That to and it's totally different than the original concept of the character. But um, yeah, that was a that was going to be a big thing. We we're going to have all these different newspaper reporters that could start showing up at your settlements. All right, let's see here. Where are you, Jake? Of course, he's working upstairs in some random thing. This is where he likes to hang out most of his time. Oh, hey. I hope things went more smooth for you than they have for me. You take care of them folks? They all set up with ASAMs now? Mm -hmm. Not sure I'd call it smooth, <laughs> but it's taken care of. Had a few hiccups, huh? I know that feeling. But glad to hear you got things sorted. After our meeting with the gunners... I was a little spooked. I was thinking twice about this whole ASAM thing. 
thanks for talking me around. Now, my turn to share some good news. I managed to get the comm hub running. Come over here, let me show you. Oh, let's see how this goes. This feels like a, uh, a moment where the AI is gonna, is gonna get us. Oh yeah, look at that camera. Come on, you can do it, Jake. Come on down, down the stairs. Don't walk off the edge of the roof. Guess I bypassed enough busted components. I was patching in a few more parts when suddenly the darn thing just sprung to life. Guess I bypassed enough busted components. That's great news. We're not out of the woods just yet, but we are close. Now that the comm hub is actually running, I know the exact parts we need to get it fully repaired. If I could get this baby fired and all sorts <laughs> just destroying again, everything. Every settlement part of a networked interchange. If we had sunlight, like get this steps in. <laughs> would be a thing of the past. Not even the gunners would be a worry no more. Plus, we'd have efficient division of labor, meaning faster settlement growth. Jake has a complicated relationship with the comm hub. Move, Synth. What have you done with the real Riley? Where's my brother? Oh, there goes Meet Caleb at his house. Hey, Don't Caleb got unstuck. God awesome. Sakes, it must have been 48 man. hours and not 24. Put the gun down now. He's a Synth. He'll kill Is us there a way to interfere with this scene? Whoop. Kyle, no! Okay, show's over. There are no I love scenes like this. City. Hear me? Just the you folks dynamic things that are just happening when you walk in. No one will mind if I just... Yeah, he doesn't need this anymore. Sorry, Riley. You know what I want to do? Um, oh, no, I can't do it. I was going to go get a, a, a recruitment quest from uh, the Ron, but we have not completed... you got to first do his uh, quest to get talk to Anton and the Powell family, and I'm saving those for later. I've been trying to, so every day I try and put in a little bit of time on our uh, our team get, which is where community rock stars, team members, and uh, other people who prove to me that they are good at troubleshooting things get access to post bugs. And there are some from years ago, and I've been trying to do a, I do most of my time on the new stuff because then I'll catch the issues of more players' experience, and then once, and then I spend a, a little bit of time researching older bugs to see if I can make any headway on them now that I know more. Because every, every year I've been into this, and we've been doing this for five years now, uh, I, I figure out more and more stuff. Let's see here. Yeah. Now, let's see what we have here. Hopefully something we can use this time. Huh. This is good timing. Not exactly what I, I had I love this voice actor. You, but He's really deep. good. You might be wondering about the dead body here decorating the floor. This... Poor slob had information on him about a certain individual that I would very much like to see dead. He, uh, resisted my initial questions, but I was able to extract what I needed eventually. His death was an unfortunate side effect of the process, but I doubt he'll be missed. The man I'm after is known as Bombface. He was a one-time Morovsky associate whose paw prints are all over the serious crime around these parts. He killed my wife, and does not hesitate to kill anyone else who crosses him. It's taken me months to. If get any of you guys has a big Skyrim finally, mod player, this uh, voice actor is Question Ryan is, Cooper. He does has done a ton of Skyrim mod voices. Puzzle. Yep, they can hear you. Awesome. Uh, well, thanks for for joining me tonight, and uh, thanks for doing all this quest work. Because I would not have. There's no way in hell I could have done this and all added all the code that we did to to chapter two. No problem. It was fun, man. You went from like zero to a hundred there, because you came in, you just wanted to help, and you didn't really like. What did yeah. you What did you know before you came on board? Like, did you had you gone through some tutorials? Had you done Skyrim modding? Like, what What where were you Where were you at when you started with us? Yeah, I played around. <clears throat> I guess I I started making a mod in Skyrim for a while, and I gotten to the point to where I could create characters. I knew I could add faces, get their equipment do all that kind of stuff but i kind of was at a loss when it came to trying to create ai and quests i just didn't know how to do it and there wasn't really any tutorials at the time um and i just kind of hit a wall and put it away and did some other stuff and then finally uh, i guess whenever i installed fallout 4 and uh experienced uh, some settlements and joined the team I kind of, I guess I would, you say zero to a hundred, I kind of went from about 10 to 100. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had to learn a little bit of everything. You had to learn some scripting and how do you do all the CK stuff and then we're using our methodology because we have kind of our own way we do quests and everything. Yeah. 
the scale of what I was going to be able to do, I, I, I kind of joined uh, with an intention to just help wherever I could. I have, you know, uh, a 3D background. I have a degree in computer animation, you know, film, I, I, writing. I, I, didn't, I was willing to help wherever I was needed. And uh, where you said was most needed was Quest implementation. So it yeah. allowed us to do the mass that we did for chapter two yeah absolutely it was fun it was one of those um you were like a uh a, a, a lucky recruit because i didn't even have a post up for help with that stuff but you yeah. just said you were totally open to doing whatever and like you had i think you had mentioned helping with quest set up and then i kind of latched onto that because i'm like oh my god that would be life-changing if if, yeah. you, if you really got into it because uh the just the pri i remember when we did chapter one so Rick and I did all the quest implementation and he did all the dialogue implementation and then I did the, the stages and the scripting and everything. Um, and we did the whole thing, the whole of chapter one, we did all the quest implementation for the main quest, not for the necessarily side stuff, but did the whole main quest in like two months. And like, you've seen how crazy it was, how much content we did and how long it took you to do all that. Like it was a lot. Um, yeah. uh, I said it last, last stream and I'll keep saying it is any of you guys out there. If you put, if you have a let's play, you do, even if you have, zero viewers we are not looking for popular people we just like to watch people play the mod um so because it helps us find issues and see you know how people are enjoying the mod or just are unenjoying certain things it's a lot of fun for us to watch uh playthroughs yeah for a variety of it's just surreal too to see to see the stuff that we make to you know to see people go through it and to watch what they do that we didn't even think about you know yeah